Good night for the meeting. I, we, I don't know that we're going to get hundreds of people to watch us anyways. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. I'll call this uh, Republican caucus for, uh, meeting to order 608, uh, July 20th. Um, we'll go around the room here. I'm present. Fred Webcat. Jim Village. Jim Webster. Now online. Who's, who do we have online? Dave Fiducia. Dave Schultz. Aaron Booker. Paul Arena. Gene Crosby. Uh, John B. Tittum. We do have a quorum. Um, is Mr. Kelly or Mr. Arena one of you guys? Oh, no, we're recording it with the live. Never mind. Okay, we don't have to have an audio recording. Um, Mr. Billich has got the invocation this week for this meeting, public comment. Uh, on the agenda, I see the chairman under 13 unfinished business. He has the board appointments again. Uh, obviously, we all remembered that we tabled. Is there any discussion about the appointments? No, keep them tabled. Uh, Mr. Webster is in favor of keeping them tabled. I see Mr. Kelly with your hand up. What say you, sir? Oh, they're out. I still can't hear you, Mr. Kelly. I don't think it's appropriate to have it on the agenda if it's been tabled. Okay, I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> Moving on to standing committee reports, finance committee. Uh, I'll run with it as a budget amendment 20. 20-21 health department to be laid over. Uh, that was, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't that a grant that we received and we're just passed through and, uh, for contact tracing, computers, uh, furniture for the health department to do contact tracing. Any questions on that? Next item is a resolution authorizing the execution of an agreement to advance $45,000 to the community mental health board. I believe that passed unanimously. The next resolution, extending employee leasing agreement with GovTemps USA for interim county administrator up to October 2nd, 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, after that's a resolution authorizing to increase the salary of the Winnebago County Public Defender. And last is consideration of an ordinance uh, providing the issue of $400,000 debt certificate to acquire certain technology equipment in and for the county and authorizing the sale of the debt certificate to Stillman Bank. Is there any questions on the finance side of things? Seeing none. Uh, Mr. McDonald, I have a question. Sure, Mr. Arena. <clears throat> so I had a conversation with Dick Coonert about the advance and the contract that they're entering into with Region 1. Uh, by us giving this advance, are we approving the expenditure of the funds then for region one, or, I mean, I had to ask him for the contract and I've had, I haven't had a chance to re read it yet, but are, are we gonna be, are we gonna maintain oversight over this money or it's, I think it's their intent from the mental health board that, that we change it up so that the board doesn't have oversight over the money. And I'm just curious, how do the rest of you feel about that? Kelly? Well, I agree with what he's saying. Uh, we should have to turn over that. You want to finish your thought or anything, Mr. Raptor? You all good? That's my comment. Yeah. I I, I couldn't hear, I'm sorry, Jim, could you repeat that? I couldn't hear you. I said, I think it's correct. We, we should retain control of, <clears throat> of the money. Okay, so then if that's the case, shouldn't we be reviewing whatever agreement they're entering into or you know, knowing what they're doing and getting it on record? Because they did not, they did not submit it to the committee. And I don't know, I, I apologize, I didn't look at the, the the packet yet for the, the board meeting, if if the actual agreement with R1 is in there, but so so 
if the majority of everyone feels okay forwarding or um, advancing the money, that's fine. But maybe we should ask to have all the documentation um, on record so that we, you know, understand what happened moving forward. That's that's my concern, I guess. Thank you. Mr. Kelly, did you still have your hand up? Still can't hear you, sir. Dave, unmute. Still can't hear you, sir. Dave, unmute. Dave, we know that you're trying to unmute, but it might be that your volume is turned down. That might help you. We still can't hear you. I see that you're unmuted, but for some reason your microphone isn't working or your volume is turned off on your microphone because we can't hear you. No, we can't hear you. I could read your lips. <laughs> what do you think, Steve? <laughs> he said, can you hear me now? <laughs> Just jump in, if, if Mr. Kelly, if you get audio back, jump in, you're more than welcome, but I think we're gonna move on. But please keep trying to figure it out. Is there anybody, uh, Mr. Fiducia? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, this whole, this whole thing looks to me like, you know, in my short time left here, you guys are gonna be up against a brick wall with this because, um, you're going to have one board that's going to want to do one thing, one board that wants to do another thing. I think that this whole thing, they should have been their own taxing district. That way they could have kept their, their funds and they could have did what they wanted to and you guys and the board wouldn't have been responsible for it. But if the board is responsible for how that money spent, then I think, you know, you guys got to keep watching that because I know I'm going to keep watching you guys to make sure you are watching that. But uh, this is, this reminds me of the old crime commission times when the crime commission was trying to tell the board how to spend the money and the board would tell the crime commission, Hey, uh, we're the one approving it, not you. So I, I, I'm going to caution, I'm going to caution this caucus, you know, that there's good, you're going to have to come up with a, a solution for this because I think you're just going to keep on walking into a brick wall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fiducia. Any other discussion on this? I, Ms. Webster. I haven't heard anyone suggest uh, perhaps laying this over until we see all the documentation. I thought perhaps that's where uh, Mr. Arena was going with this. Um, if that's the case, somebody help me out. If Paul? Yeah, um, if, if that's what it takes to lay it over, then then so be it. Um, I, I do have a copy of the agreement and I guess really it's probably um, insufficient time now for us to give a proper review and have the opportunity to ask questions. So, so maybe it should be laid over, but I'm also not trying to unnecessarily stir up, you know, trouble about it. I just feel like it's new, right? It's something that we're just getting going with. And um, I understand that they have good intentions and are anxious to get going. But um, Mr. Cooner told me that it's that they would like to bring forward a resolution to, you know, remove the board from having oversight. And I think that they're proceeding from that perspective. And we may maybe need to as of today, they, they don't have over, you know, we have oversight. So, um, you know, I, I started questioning him about, you know, why are you spending $45,000 with region one and, and what are they doing? Um, apparently, like, like I said, I've got to read that contract and I just haven't had time yet, but, um, you know, maybe laying it over would be the best option. So what, what, what how do you all feel about that, about laying it over? I would support laying it over. Me too. It's already going to be laid over. It's, isn't it? 
No, it's only a resolution. Since it's not an ordinance, it will not. You're right. I would support laying it over. We're not allowed to vote, but I think we can have a conversation. Yeah, we just have a conversation. Then. Yeah. Ms. Crosby. I just want to add, it's my understanding, how, first of all, how much money have we given to R1 right now? I wish I had that number. I, I, Mr. Sagato may be able to answer that. I do not have that answer. If we, if we don't um, embrace R1, we lose our highway funds from the state. So I don't want to go down that road and lose highway funds. So I need to know if we're going to lay this over or not vote on it ever, that um, we're not going to lose our highway funds. So someone look into that for us, please. Well, if I could just interject there, I, I don't think this is not, it's mixing issues. I mean, they're hiring R1 to do some work and, and, uh, Mr. Cooner told me it's $45,000, but that doesn't mean that they're paying R1 $45,000. It's just that they'll have that much money available to them. Um, part of my questioning is why are you hiring R1 to do a website for you? That doesn't seem like within their area of expertise. And uh, like I said, I haven't read the contract yet to find out if that's truly what's happening. So <clears throat> it's not necessarily that we're not going to do it. It's just if we have oversight of the money, then the contract should be on record that we're approving an advance of up to forty-five or $45,000 for them to use up to that amount for our one for the purpose that's identified in the contract. More or less just making sure that there's complete communication, which I don't, I listened into that um, committee hearing and it didn't seem like there was a lot of detail shared. So, um, but I'll, uh, you know, I guess back to Mrs. Crosby's comment, I'm not suggesting that we not do any business with R1 on this or that, or, or that the um, mental health board shouldn't do business with R1, just that we need to document what exactly is happening. Thank you. Ms. Webster? Yeah, just one more follow-up on this. We, we, we need to remember, always be cognizant of the fact that we, the elected officials, uh, will be, our feet are held to the fire about how we're spending taxpayers' dollars. And so when you get questions about from constituents about why did you guys blow that money on this or that, we say, well, we authorize them to whatever. Who's them? Some bureaucrats that we turn money over to. And so we're the ones that the board members are the ones, the county board is the ones that are always being accused of misspending or too much spending or why didn't you spend? I keep saying everything revolves around the dollar and that's true. And so it all comes back to us every time. So I'm, if there's no, I don't see, a, I didn't hear anything in any of the conversation that it was uh, something critical we had to do. At this point, I mean, is there a drop dead deadline or something? I don't know. So that's why. Do you remember, Paul? I, if I recall right, they had fifteen thousand dollars three times. Do you remember which each three bucket was for? Well, one was for the website. One was for the survey that they're doing, and um, and I can't remember the third one, but. Um, Mr. Cooner told me that those numbers weren't necessarily an accurate um, allocation of the funds. Um, and so, you know, that, that's part of the, the issue that's happened with this mental health board. It's like we get information and then the story changes. It's just been a moving target the whole time. So I, on this one, I just think before we start giving the money, while we are still in the position of having oversight that we follow whatever procedures we have for spending money. So if it's something that needs bids, it gets bid. Um, if, you know, a contract needs to be on record that a contract is, is on record that, that, you know, just kind of setting the standard of what we do for everything else. Mr. Schultz. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, one of the thoughts in my head is that I know that I have already received mixed messages about who has control of the money, and I don't believe I'm just making that up. And so when Mr. Arena says, well, the way it's set up now is we have control over the money, at a minimum, I'm concerned about there being mixed messages that are being communicated about that. The second point is, it seems like if we have control of the budget, then we should have an actual budget. That is, Steve and his office should work with them to come up with, here's an anticipation of how much revenue we'll have during this fiscal year, and then this is the plan in terms of spending that, and that's what we approve. It may be that for some reason, there's absolutely no way to predict the revenue. If that's the case, then maybe we really do have to do this on a one-off basis. It seems like a really bad way of managing money, and it's not how we manage money anywhere else as a county. So my preference would be to have an actual budget presented and then approved by the board. That still gives the health department a huge amount of latitude in terms of, well, what do they put in the budget? And, and that's how we typically respond to the process. The budgets are prepared, we approve the budget. Good point. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Kelly, do you still want to speak? Are you, are you back up and running there, Mr. Kelly? Not yet. We tried, still can't hear you. All right, yeah, I don't disagree. We should have oversight, uh, take, especially they're asking us to borrow the money. I think as well with our right to say, what are you gonna spend it on? How's it gonna be spent? So I, I agree with that statement. Any other discussion on anything finance related? Move on to zoning, Mr. Webster. We're dead in the water. Dead in the water. Economic development? Uh, we're actually expecting to have a meeting starting next week. We'll work on a couple different things. Uh, and uh, minor issues we'll discuss as far as uh, something coming back up that technically we approved, but based on uh, the original agreement, uh, that was with the SBA manufacturing, which we were technically included in the tax abatement that the city approved. We were supposed to be a part of that program. However, that tax, uh, that, that actual um, program wasn't completely up and running. Come to find out now that we may have an issue with that. So that's what we look into us to make sure that we're still going to hold up our end. Paul, you have to speak up. I can't hear you. Oh, uh, it's me. It, it's, it's me, Gene. Sorry. I'll speak up a little bit. I'm going further from the speaker. Um, so we might be looking back at that S-Wing uh, uh, agreement again, uh, not because anything necessarily was wrong on our end, but technically part of the agreement was part of the, the, the uh, enterprise zone agreement with the city, which we were a part of for the tax abatement. So they're just looking to come to us again and, and make sure that they're still going to be on board with that. We may have to pass a separate uh, um, incremental tax abatement, just increments on the new building, which is what we technically agreed to with the original agreement, what they were doing. Um, aside from that, we will be also looking at um, one other matter of business, but I don't think that one's going to be ready yet. Uh, and then also the enterprise zone itself is going to be coming up. I don't believe on this next meeting, but the meeting following that one. And that's it. We have no other, we have actually no business for this week. Moving on, operations, we have a report for this week. Uh, public Works, can you, wait, now's your time, Mr. Kelly, for Public Works. Uh, is anybody else on public works that can speak? Am. All right, Mr. Webster, help us out here, please. Oh, God, I should have looked it up. Let me think here. Got a resolution? Oh, for, yeah, we uh, we're got a uh, resolution to uh, get some bids for um, paving on Perryville Road from East State South to Harrison Avenue and repaving also now. What's the next one? It's another good one, too. Uh, Montague Road. Uh, Montague Road, yes, thank you. Montague Road. Uh, west to Kennedy Hill Road. So um, I think that Rock, Rockford Blacktop was the low bidder on Perryville. And I don't recall, uh, I should have brought this with me. Money use still says TBD. To be determined. Okay, yes. Yes, okay. Just, just under $236,000 for Perryville. Yes. So that's good news that 
we've got uh, the funding to do that. And so uh, we languished for a number of years with the county highway because we just didn't have money to do hardly anything. But things came together this year from a number of different uh, funding sources. And so those two projects are within our capital plan. And we do have a capital plan moving forward for the next, uh, I think, three years anyways. So you'll see it next three, four, maybe even five years. We should see a lot of uh, action going on. There's a lot going on now, actually. Is any of this because of the increased motor fuel tax or the fuel Yes, tax? A, a lot of it comes to the increase in motor fuel taxes, yes. Any questions for Mr. Webster? This was budgeted. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Webster says it was budgeted. Anything else? We'll move on to public safety, Mr. Booker. Thank you, Chairman. Public Safety Committee has uh, two resolutions. Uh, one is authorizing the execution of police services agreement between Winnebago County and the village of Manchester Park. And that uh, it wasn't unanimous in committee, but it did pass. Uh, second resolution is approving an intergovernmental agreement for Harlem Consolidated School Resource Officer Program. Uh, that was also met with one opposition, uh, but it did pass committee. Excellent. Um, I just want to let, uh, I got a couple other things here that weren't on the agenda. I just want to let everybody know that, uh, that the, on July 28th, I believe it's uh, yeah, a week from tomorrow night, uh, online, it'll be streaming. There is a police forum um, and that was initiated and suggested by uh, Ms. Red. And we've got it uh, all set in place. We're gonna have it at Memorial Hall and it will be streaming. Um, another bit of good news is uh, Chief Deputy Saganic uh, informed me that the feds have increased the federal inmate uh, uh, population in the county jail. Uh, so now we are jumping from uh, uh, county uh, jail bringing in 1. Uh, what 8 million. We're jumped up to get this everybody, three million dollars uh, a year. Uh, revenue from the feds uh, because of the amount of federal inmates that we're watching and uh, uh, they are also in the process of hiring more corrections officers. That's an ongoing process. So uh, that is awesome, incredible news. And then uh, I just want uh, everybody to be aware of uh, uh, the governor's, uh, uh, the court order <clears throat> or the judge ruled that the this is just uh, for your information that the judge ruled that by law, Governor Pritzker's emergency powers lapsed 30 days after he declared COVID-19 a disaster and that all of his orders after April 8th, 2020, that relate to COVID-19 disaster are void ab initio. That's Latin for void when they were created. Pritzker had no authority to issue orders after April 8th and legally all orders issued after that date never existed. The Emergency Management Agency Act, which Governor Pritzker claimed him, gave him authority to issue perpetual decrees, shuttering businesses and churches and authority to suspend countless civil liberties, states clearly that the governor only has certain emergency powers that can be exercised for no more than 30 days following the declaration of a disaster. This was confirmed by an attorney. So uh, that's just uh, for your information. That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Booker? Mr. Schultz. Thank you. I'm just curious, how are we making out on the McChesney Park and the, the school officer for Harlem? Uh, well, those were the resolutions that I read in that, that past uh, committee. We had one opposition for the uh, contract. That was due to uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the late submission of it. Uh, uh, that was, uh, I, I believe we got it the day of our committee meeting. And uh, it's understandable for anyone to, uh, you know, to be in opposition of, uh, of it because of a, a red line, because we didn't have a chance to review it. But uh, uh, Mr. Kurlinkus assured us that uh, it was a minor red line. It doesn't affect uh, the terms, uh, uh, or I should say the, uh, the budget of uh, the contract. So uh, uh, we look good there. And the school resource 
officer program is uh, moving forward. Uh, the only difference there is that uh, instead of it being a contract through McChesney Park for the school resource, it's now a contract with the Harlem Consolidated School District. So uh, that's all done. It's inked. It's ready to go. And uh, it'll be. Yeah, I apologize, Mr. Booker. I'm sorry. I wasn't clear in my question. How are we doing financially? How are we making out financially in these contracts? Are we confident that we're recovering our costs? Uh, yes, I, I am. Um, the way they've structured it this year was, uh, uh, it's three point, uh, I could be wrong. I know it's 3 million, but it's like 3.3 million. And then there's some flexibility due to overtime, uh, maintenance, but, uh, uh, yeah, it, we do seem confident that, uh, we are recovering all costs from McChesney and there wasn't any, uh, opposition or, uh, any concerns from McChesney Park on, on paying those uh, costs to make sure that, uh, you know, we're not on the hook or that we're, we're getting uh, uh, shortchanged on it as uh, the county. That's the way I read it as well, Mr. Booker, is any overtime must be approved through the village now, which mm -hmm. in case they got to pay for it, they need to sign off on it. I did read that specific language, Mr. Schultz, in there. I, I, I was happy to see that the, the village rather has to sign off on any overtime but I didn't, I, I can't point to the paragraph where it said, just because they signed off, that also means that they're paying. So I don't know the answer either as far as if this contract actually covers 100% of all costs, uh, but you seem to think it does, Mr. Booker? Yes, yes, uh, I, I believe it does. And uh, Chief Saganic will be uh, online or present uh, for uh, the county board meeting um, Thursday night. Thank you. Mr. Arena. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did ask that question uh, to both those resolutions and if we were fully covering our costs and the response was that we were. So that's what was reported to us in committee, but <clears throat> it's probably a good idea to reaffirm that during the board meeting. Thank you. I agree. Any other questions for Mr. Arena? No, not Mr. Arena, Mr. Booker. Uh, Mr. Fiducia has a question there. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Aaron, are we still on a one-year notice from them for a cancellation? No, that's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to make sure I included that. Uh, this contract is uh, all goes till uh, April of 2024. And in signing this, it says there's 18 month out. So you if you recall, a little bit ago, they, they served notice of separation uh, by signing this contract. That must be, make that move null because this contract does say 18 month notice. That's how I understand it, but I want, uh, I want affirmation from uh, uh, Chief Saganic and uh, um, I'll even request that Tammy Goral, uh, the Sheriff's uh, Secretary who's uh, instrumental in getting this uh, finished up, uh, ask her to be on board as well. But uh, that's the way I understand it, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. Aaron. Any other questions for Mr. Booker? I don't see any. Move on to uh, personnel and policies, Mr. Fiducia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we don't have, uh, well, we, we will have something for this meeting. We're going to be having a meeting tomorrow night. I just want to make sure that all the uh, uh, board members receive the resolution approving the uh, administration's agreement with Patrick J. Thompson. Did you guys receive that? Did everybody receive that? Okay. Uh, at this time, at this time, we will be having a uh, a meeting tomorrow, and I I would have done it the other way, but uh, uh, we're going to be doing it on Zoom tomorrow. Uh, is there any questions right now that you guys want to go over? this, uh, the, the contract, is there anything in there, any red flags that you think, because we could probably address them with myself and Mr. Arena on this, but uh, I think the, I think Paul and, and uh, uh, Mr. Chapman did a good, a uh, really good deal on this. And I believe the state's attorney uh, drew this up. So I think we're, we're all, we're all good and live on this. Any questions for Mr. Padua? Mr. Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the comment that I made when Mr. Arena called me and asked about my support for this uh, was, you know, we're increasing the pay by a substantial amount. 
I'm positive about that in the context of also looking at the CFO position and reconsidering whether or not that the, the financial uh, management or supervision or tasks that would be accomplished that we now feel like we're missing could be achieved at a lower expense with a with a less significant position. So we know we've been functioning for quite some time without that position. It keeps being brought up from time to time as, oh, this is an open position. We really need this position. And I'm open to the possibility that there is work that's not getting done, but it seems as though the critical work, first of all, is getting accomplished. And <clears throat> second of all, if we can backfill the functions that are not being covered with a less expensive person than a CFO, that makes a lot more sense. So we hire to get the work done. We don't hire for a position. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, yes. I think that I think that's an excellent observation. Uh, but what I'd like to do is is uh, get this individual in place. And when he's in place, I'd like to go ahead and uh, pose that same comment to him and see what, what he's going to come up with with that, too. Because if there's going to be any hires, I think I would assume, you know, the, the hire is going to work for this gentleman. And if there's things this gentleman can do and we can uh, reduce the county's costs, I think, uh, I think this is something that's important. Just as a follow-up, and I appreciate that point, but... My concern is this, if we don't convey to him the possibility that we may want to restructure that CFO position and do it more economically, then he comes on board. He then later on says, you told me I was getting specifically a CFO. And, you know, I just would prefer if this conversation as a heads up would be, would be given to him so that it's not a bait and switch or it's not a deal that we can't legitimately raise later with him because. Uh, could I defer to the ad hoc uh, chair on this? Uh, is there, would it be uh, inappropriate for us to have a communication with him uh, other than our state's attorney right now and convey that to him? Well, <clears throat> so is the concern that he might be entering into the job with one assumption and then that fact might change. Is that, is that where your concern is, Mr. Schultz? Concern is exactly that, that he has in, we've been communicating, I assume somebody's communicated, hey, there's a couple of unfilled positions. One's a CFO, one's an HR director. And, you know, if that's the case, which I think it likely is, then he comes on board thinking he's going to have someone of that caliber, of that stature, and with that capability. But it may be that we that we are able to pull this off with with less a less expensive position or personnel. Um, I will contact Workplace tomorrow and make them aware of this and see if they could relay that message to him. But I'd also like to say that. He seemed to fully understand that it's his obligation to manage our budget, to bring to the board um, a budget that that works, and um, and I think part of that is, you know, allocation of financial resources towards personnel. So I would think he would expect that, that he would recognize that, you know, he's not going to come in thinking he can just spend money hiring people when if it's obvious when you look at the numbers that we just don't have the funding for it, but I could be assuming too much. So I will make sure that somehow we communicate that message to him. Mr. Webster. Uh, yeah, he, he struck me as a very, very capable uh, person for the job. And when you talk to him, he tells you about his past workings with different counties and so forth like that. I think, uh, I think he's more than capable to, to handle this. Um, but following on what Steve said, I also think it's important that he gets that message. I think that's important because he made a comment that he was shocked or very surprised to him which way it was that we didn't have more personnel in the finance department. He thought for a county our size, 
we should have a larger finance department or more people in that department. And he's probably right, because I've heard that before, that for uh, an organization this size, if this were a business this size, there would be at least a half a dozen people in that finance department. So I think once again, uh, doesn't hurt a thing to convey that message as uh, Steve was pointing out, to get this in his brain already there. That we're thinking maybe we don't need a CFO, maybe we just need some more people in there to do some of the heavy lifting. Any other comments on that topic? Me. Oh, I didn't even see there, Ms. Crosby. Go ahead. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I thank Mr. Arena for being willing to follow up with Lorraine tomorrow. And Steve Schultz is absolutely right that um, things change along the way and we don't want to have any misconceptions. And as Mr. Webster said, the message has to be delivered. So I think that Steve's comments are spot on and they're relevant and I thank him for them. Hey, Ms. Crosby. Any other discussion? You must, Ms. Crosby, you must have been just off my screen because I didn't see you at all. I apologize. Well, I've been raising my hand for a half hour. No, just kidding. <laughs> and on this kind of stuff, if, if, if I'm not seeing you, please do what Ms. Crosby did speak up. I just did not see it all. Any other, other discussion for uh, personnel policy? Uh, I got a couple other things I'd, I, right. I'd like to throw in tonight, okay? Um, first, is that okay, Mr. Chair? Please. Okay. Uh, first, uh, first thing I'd like to throw in is uh, I'll, I'm going to be asking the animal services director uh, to attend the meeting tomorrow night. Um, we are taking no action with Boone County, but uh, I am directing him. I'm directing him to come up with Plan A, Plan B, and Plan C. Uh, and I'm basically going to do. I'm basically telling him to have Boone County contact us and we're not contacting them. But whatever plan that we do come up for Boone County, because it seems as though uh, Boone County Animal Services is, is having a problem, but there's also, I believe, a, a, a union problem there too, that we will not do anything for Boone County, except the you know, only thing we're gonna do for Boone County is if it's going to be advantageous, or we're gonna make some money in Winnebago County. So I just want to get that out there. So I'm going to have Brett uh, attend the meeting uh, on Zoom tomorrow night. The next thing I'd like to bring up is uh, we have 33 cases of COVID at uh, River Bluff. Uh, they feel that the COVID's been brought in by employees. Uh, Steve told me that they think that one person has passed away out there from it, but the person was on hospice, and we're not sure how that was reported. Uh, Steve's, Steve's going to be asking and he, asking for permission to negotiate with the union some incentives for River Bluff because we are having extreme problems getting people wanting to go into work out there because of the COVID. Uh, and so uh, this is something that's going to be, uh, be coming to us, but I want you guys to be aware of it, that it's uh, lingering out there. And... Uh, I, you know, I just don't know what to tell you about this COVID uh, because I don't know if they want to give them some type of, uh, you know, a financial incentive for uh, coming to work. But I know that our census is down out there, but uh, we, we, are, we are having problems with employees out there wanting to come. So uh, tomorrow night, personal and policies, those two items, but I want to get the uh, uh, River Bluff out there for you guys so you know what's going to be, what's going on, because I think Steve is going to be asking for permission. Thank you. Mr. Producer, those 33 people that have it, are they residents or faculty? Residents that have it, but they believe that the, they, and the only way that they felt that the residents could get it was through the uh, employees coming in. 
And I was under the impression that everybody came in there, wore masks, had to have their temperature taken, had to have tests and whatnot. But for somehow that, that uh, virus snuck into our facility. And uh, uh, I know it's tough on those residents. They, you know, uh, their, their families can't even get in there to see them. And so I don't know, I don't know how that happened. So I think the only logical thing is, is they got it through the employees and we still are using employees from a temp, temps are coming in because we do not have the staff to uh, man the place. Thank you for that information. Mr. Schultz. Yeah, we do know, and I know Mr. Fiducia knows this as well, that a large percentage of the COVID cases are asymptomatic. And so it's very possible that they did all the things that they ought to have done and there still would be the potential of exposure. True, thank you, Ms. Schultz. Any other discussion on this? Anything for new business? I did have one thing I wanna talk about quick. Does anybody else wanna talk about anything on new business? Uh that? Well, I, okay, are we done with all of our committee stuff? Yes. Okay, I, I do want to say something here that was brought up early in the meeting, um, and uh, Schultz has been showing a lot of wisdom here tonight. Thank you, Steve. And the one thing he brought up there was that he didn't think it was appropriate to have that tabled amendment back on the agenda again. And I agree with him 100%. All that's gonna do is just stir up some more. It's not gonna go anywhere. I don't see that thing going anywhere whatsoever. And it's just gonna be another opportunity for uh, apparently to have a bunch of more people speak at the uh, board agenda, board meeting, uh, encouraging us to take it off the table, which anyone I've talked to doesn't have any flavor to do that, any taste to do that anyway. So. I think it's, I think it's just going to be a waste of time, really. And I would appreciate it if you and uh, the res con respective Democrat caucus chairman would have a conversation with Frank and ask him, please, you know, let's not do this, okay. because I think it, his reasons for doing it are just to try to shame us into arm twist us to do something that it's, that's just not right. That's not the way to do things. That was a surprise move to put it out in the first place. Sure. And as I said, I'm sorry to interrupt, but as I said, I don't think it's legitimate to have it on the agenda. That is the nature of it being tabled means it's not on the agenda. I'll call uh, Curling is for clarification to make because it's illegal, then there's not even any discussion to it. That would be good. Do you have your hand up, Mr. Butita? Yeah, yes, I do. Yeah, just to that, that point, uh, I, I don't know if it's an appropriate agenda item or not, uh, but I'm in favor of uh, taking these uh, appointments on a one-to-one -one basis. I don't think voting on them as, on a, as a whole slate or tabling them as, as a whole slate is the appropriate action. I think they should be handled one-on-one, -on -one, but whether or not uh, it's an appropriate agenda, I, don't, I do not know. Thank you. Any other discussion on that topic? I just want to bring up really quickly, I don't believe we properly adjourned the last meeting. Um, things were going down, some comments were made. I know a lot of people still had their hand up to ask questions or make comments. Um, the chairman called for motion to adjourn. The motion was given. I believe he called Mr. Hoffman for a second when Mr. Hoffman's hand was clearly up to ask questions and not to second the motion. Uh, there was no vote taken after the meeting, which after I did call Mr. Kirlinkas, he said the chairman does not have to take a vote to adjourn the meeting, but he cannot adjourn it if there's any opposition to it, which clearly there was. I believe Mr. Webster, you had your hand up. Mr. Hoffman had his hand up. There were several people waiting to speak when I feel the meeting was improperly adjourned last week. So I, I would also like to talk to the chairman about that, that uh, I don't feel it was done properly. And uh, I didn't really appreciate him silencing the people who still had something to say. That's all I have. Mr. Booker. Thank you, chairman. I too, um, matter of fact, I, I, I shot an email off to Mr. Kalinkas and uh, 
Ms. Hyatt Ross uh, uh, directly after the meeting. Um, I was uncomfortable with uh, with uh, comments made by a board, a board member and I, I as well saw, I don't know, two or three hands up uh, uh, that were wanting to discuss uh, the comments that were made by the board member. But I just let them know that I felt that the uh, it wasn't a proper adjournment and uh, I was uncomfortable with uh, uh, comments that were made. Uh, Ms. Hyatt Ross responded uh, uh, by calling. Uh, we had a discussion about it and she too said that uh, as long as there's uh, According to them, uh, as long as there's a, a motion and a second, we don't have to take a vote, which I find funny. So I uh, just want to let everybody know that. Thank you. Mr. Klinka says we don't have to take a vote as long as nobody is in opposition of adjourning the meeting. Any other discussions for this evening, Mr. Webster? Yeah, uh, we've kind of, uh, what Aaron's alluding to, some comments and that, and. Let's be honest with each other here. Let's be, let, let's be frank with each other. The comment that I made, uh, not at the last board meeting, but the one prior to that, when I went off and said, I'm sick of what's going on around here and to lock these people up. And I called some of them animals, anarchists, you know? That was my personal comment. You know, I, I wasn't speaking for the entire board. And I think everybody understood that. The chairman chastised me about my comments at the open meeting there, saying I should be more careful choosing my words. So at our last meeting now, at the end, towards the end of that meeting, I thought Tim, and I'm sure that's who we're referring to here, Tim's comments were very inappropriate when he said, all I heard is a bunch of white men uh, with white privilege. And I thought that was rather offensive. Um, I don't know who he was referring to about having white privilege. Um, you know, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me whatsoever. I was raised in a family of five, in a two bedroom apartment, you know, with a father who never got the chance to finish high school, but he self-educated himself. He went on to be a, a firefighter for the city of Rockford, self-educated himself far enough to kept studying, to take tests, wound up retiring as a lieutenant in the Rockford Fire Department, he raised five kids. My mother's the product of immigrants. Her parents came straight over on the boat. They didn't have nothing. My grandfather got a job at a, at a at a shop, Mechanics International, which is still standing on Harrison Avenue, not being used, but he took a job being a grinder, the lowliest job in the shop, grinding all day. Nasty, filthy, hot job. But he did that to support his family. And my parents did that to support us. And so I am surely not coming from privilege. And for them to make statements like that and him not to perhaps chastise uh, Mr. Neighbors a little bit about that, because I thought that was an inappropriate comment, you know? So if you want to talk about privilege, let's talk about somebody like uh, maybe Joe Biden's son. Now, there's white privilege, but I'm not, and I don't know anyone else that I served with on that board to be tagged that way. I don't get it. Mr. So. Chairman, may I add something to that? Mr. Producer. Thank you. Uh, Jim, I, I agree with you, but I get, the, I get the feeling that Mr. Neighbors was emotional. He let emotions override his intellect at yeah. that point. And uh, one of the things that, one of the things that I, I really do feel is, was I offended by it? Well, you know what, I, I, this, this weekend, I still train for the Park District Police, okay? And I'm, I've, I've, got the, I've got the aches and pains uh, to uh, uh, attribute that. And was I, was I offended? Yeah, I'm offended by some of the stuff that's going on. But I also think that Mr. Neighbors might have had a pre-written message. And uh, I don't know, if, I don't know, it didn't make no sense. 
that he put that in there. It didn't make no sense to what we were talking about to me. And I'm thinking that he might have had a little emotion overriding some of his intellect. And I and I I feel bad for him, but I you know we all we all let our mouths overload our hind end sometimes. And yeah. I I, I want to give him I want to give him that, but not that what he said was wasn't wrong and didn't offend me. But I guess sometimes I want to try and let's just forgive him and move on. Yeah, and, and, I, and I get that, I understand that. And uh, Steve and all of his wisdom uh, said that to me that, you know, Tim's comments probably came from a place of pain. And I get that. I totally understand that. So when I made the prior comment two weeks before that, I thought about it afterwards. And so I called Tim and I had a talk with Tim. And I told him, Tim, if the comments that I made about locking people up offended you, I'm sorry, Tim. I'm not sorry for the comments that I made because I'm sincere about that. These people that are acting like animals, they are anarchists, burning our cities down to the ground, burning the cop cars, beating people up for no reason. They belong in jail. But Tim, if I offended you personally, I'm sorry for that. And I said, will you take, accept my apology? He said, yes. And I said, are we good? And he said, yes. And so I kind of thought that maybe the reverse might happen, <laughs> you know, after Tim made his comments, but I don't want to keep beating this, beat this, beating this issue up. But, you know, I'm just not one to hold back. And I, I want you guys to know how I feel. And I know some of you, your feelings kind of line up with what I just said, but you just don't want to talk about it. Mr. Schultz, you had your hand up. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Obviously, this is a this is a sensitive conversation, and we all have, you know, our own history with the the pathway that we're on and where we are and what goes into that. So I'm sympathetic to that. I just do want to clarify that the terminology "white privilege" isn't talking about the belief that you had wealth in your upbringing or that you had particular advantages because of your family situation. It is specifically referring to not being limited based on the color of your skin. That is, that's the definition. And so I just would encourage you to look it up that, you know, the, the one of the things I saw recently was a sign that, that you know, was held that said something like, and I know I'm probably delving in an area where I'm going to get, you know, make people mad. I don't mean to, <laughs> but when I, you know, the, the, the poster said something like, you know, when we say that black lives matter, it's not that we're not saying that all lives matter. We're just saying that because of the color of our skin, we have less opportunity and greater risk. And that's the messaging behind the white privilege. It's that there's a prejudice based on the color of their skin that is limiting in terms of opportunity and in terms of housing and education and a whole variety of other things. It's not about saying that, Jim, you didn't have a difficult upbringing and you don't have parents that, you know, by the skin of their teeth and the sweat of their brow, they made ends meet. It's not talking about that. It's just that the color of your skin gives you a certain status or certain advantages in America. That's the point it's trying to make. And in the context of that definition, I wasn't offended by what Mr. Neighbors said because I believed that's what he was trying to communicate. And you know, so that's food for thought. Thank, thank you. And, and I think once again, if the meeting hadn't have been cut so short, we would have had more of a conversation on at the board meeting about this. Sure. Because like I said, you know, let's, let's be honest with each other. Let's lay the cards on the table, you know? Let, let each other know how we feel. And if I made inappropriate comments, you know, I'm sorry for them. And I'll take my lumps. If I got them coming to me, yes, I'll take my lumps for that. And I will, try to uh, temper my thoughts. Mr. Arena. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I just wanna 
express my interpretation of what happened. I thought Tim's comments were incredibly inappropriate because he was criticizing the fact that we had tabled the nominee nominations and uh, spoke against uh, Mr. Westcott for being that he had been there for 20 years and wasn't willing to step aside and let somebody else in. Um, I, and I think all of that was inaccurate in terms of uh, describing our motivations. Chairman Haney made a spectacle of the whole thing. He used race as a, as a means to replace these people or, or, you know, make these appointments. That was the basis of his selections. I don't think that the candidates he picked were necessarily appropriate for the spots he was putting them. Um, and, and I think Mr. Neighbors mischaracterized us um, in, in criticizing our motivations for doing it. So that's why I was offended by it. I, and I understand, I called him also, and he did say that he was, um, kind of caught up in the moment, which, you know, that I can uh, forgive, but I think he should acknowledge uh, publicly uh, that, that, that there was more going on than to this, that, you know, Chairman Haney taking the appointments and having that whole, hey, everybody look at me press conference, look what a great guy I am. Uh, it was all mishandled. It was all just a big, Poor, poorly, the, the process wasn't followed on, on, on how it should have been done. And I think that's more the reason why these uh, appointments were tabled than anything else. It doesn't, we shouldn't be out there appointing people just because they're a minority. That's the wrong way to do it. So um, the more I've thought about it, the more upset I've become over, over what he said, especially since it was placed there in the editorial in the paper um, as, uh, you know, them endorsing Tim's comments. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. We'll go to Mr. Schultz and Mr. Schultz. Yeah, I, I want to say that I, that I, I, it doesn't, it's not me talking out of both sides of my mouth. I believe, but I do believe that was, what Mr. Arena says is correct. I think that Mr. Neighbors was used as a pawn by the chairman, that the chairman touched on hot issues that Mr. Neighbors cared deeply about and that, that I think he was used. And I, I was upset about that. I, the fact that Ms. Red was opposed to this happening at all was evidence that this was not about a right process to what Mr. Arena just said. And I agree with that. And I was very upset with the chairman's press conference. I was upset with how these were brought in at the last minute as appointees. And so that part of it was also very upsetting to me. Well, actually, um, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I actually do want to say I agree exactly with what just Steve just said and what Paul said. And, and just to add on there was that was that whole twisting using a wrong leadership style. And I think that it was absolutely wrong. Uh, I agree that we did not adjourn properly. And I wanted to, you know, I was going to keep my mouth shut completely on it, but I think that last bit touched on it. I just wanted to say that that is 100% uh, an issue that we are having right now. And I think that needs to be, not by us, it doesn't need to be made public necessarily spectacle because right now what we need to also be sure that we're doing is we're publicly elected for the public to serve the public. And everything we have been doing thus far over the last few months has shown how great we've been doing. And then now we have a political fiasco that was created just as a dog and pony show. And to try to make us look terrible and bring us back to this negative image in the public's eye. And I think that that's absolutely appalling. I think that's taking advantage of this current election cycle. I think it's taking advantage of the board members. I think it's taking advantage of the opportunities that we've uh, tried to extend to everyone. And I think it's creating a uh, bigger cesspool of uh, basically creating more little political wars that's not benefiting anyone and the fact that other leaders in our community who I've discussed with at length agree 100% that this was a terrible dog and pony show and we're being made, to, we're being made into a spectacle 
and all of the hard work that we're putting in isn't going to be appreciated as much as it should have been. So. Uh, and as a follow-up to that, this whole thing created a divide and conquer culture, not just among board members, but a board, but among the public uh, in general. This is something that should should shouldn't have happened. I'm glad we're having this conversation. I hope we can have more of these open conversations. I hope we can have more open dialogue on the board floor. I hope more people will speak up on the board floor when things when things go wrong like this. And let's put put the blame where the where it belongs. The guy at the top did this and created this havoc. That, that's like you said, that's, that's no way to run a railroad here, you know? If I may just follow up with that, just to make sure that, I just want to make sure that uh, my message came across right. All I'm saying is that definitely the county board needs to continue to try to stay as unified as we can. We work very well across party lines. We work very well with each other. Um, even when we disagree, we figure it out. Most of us don't out and cry afterwards. And we move on and we keep going to the next matter of business. And I just think that we need to just keep staying on that, keep working our way towards it, towards the, the goal at the end of the tunnel. And uh, I, I definitely want to thank the rest of the board and, uh, for showing the support for some of these members who weren't discussed with that their appointment was up for uh, um, in question or in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I just want to say that I, I really do honor the board for doing that. Are you in a discussion on this topic? I don't see Ms. Crosby on the screen, so if you got something to speak up. Looks like nothing. Is there, a, is there other items for to go to the order this evening? About a motion to adjourn. Mr. Bill is seconded by Mr. Webster. Mr. Booker, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you very much. What?